Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a workflow that will work for your iPad or whatever mobile device you happen to be on. I'm using an iPad. Uh, one thing that you will have to figure out is how to get your photos from your camera into your mobile device. Now, for me, I use a USB-C uh, dongle that plugs into my iPad and then I take the SD card from my camera, save that onto the iPad, and that's how that goes. Now, I'm not gonna be able to show that to you today just because that's not in the video, but look, you can figure that portion out for yourself. And then, once you have all your photos on there, we're gonna go through this walkthrough. I have never used On One Mobile as my primary mobile editing software. But today I'm going to take you through a workflow and we'll see how well I fare with using it uh, in on one. So let's dive into it. All right. So as you can see, here we are inside of on one mobile and I'm going to go ahead and upload a few images. I think I'm just going to create a new album. So I'm going to tap on new album. There we go. And we'll just call this workflow because I just want to figure out what this is gonna uh, be like. So now that I have an empty folder here, I'm gonna go into my uh, import. I'm gonna import from a device. I don't wanna import from distro photos. I don't know, I don't, there we go. And then we'll go back one more. And I've already uploaded the photos into the workflow photo uh, folder. Now. These are raw images straight out of the Canon R6. Uh, I may run into some issues now that I think about it. So we're gonna go ahead, hit select, select all, and then open. All the images from the card are now into On One Mobile. Uh, so, so far, so good, right? We'll find out. So let's go ahead and try and edit a photo. I wonder if there's a calling system. Yeah, okay. So there is a calling system that you can use. Uh, what you would do, I'm gonna tap on the first image here, and I like to have the info up, but I get it, some people may not. So I'm just gonna turn the info off. And uh, I had some birds that are a bird that laid eggs in a tree right next to our driveway. And so I've been observing them uh, unfortunately, I don't think they made it. Uh, some squirrels got into the tree and it looks like there was some problems. So if you want to cull your images, you can go through. So let's say I like this photo on the right hand side of the screen, you drag up or drag down. So I'm going to say I like it. I dragged up and or I drug up. I don't know. Proper English. Um, and let's see what happens. Uh, so on the left side, you get your star rating. This is similar to Lightroom, so uh, I'm thankful that that stayed the same. We're going to move on to the next photo. I think that this one's good, too. Uh, I'm not worried about that one. I don't really like the portrait uh, layout. And the nest is really soft in the front. And I would have preferred to have the nest more sharp in the front and uh, focused in the background. But that's just me. How do you filter these? Let's see. I think you can use the magnifying glass. I can go with just the hearts. And now I see all, well, as soon as I close that, the filter goes away. So you have to leave the filter open while you're trying to look at the selected images. So there is a way of culling, uh, not the way that I would prefer. You don't have any color ratings. Uh, all you get to do is choose Yes, I like the photo. No, I don't like the photo or you leave it alone. And then you can give it a star rating uh, one through five. So that's something to take into consideration. Let's go ahead and uh, open up the editing portion here. So now that I have the photo inside the edit module, I'm going to start with AI auto just to see what on one thinks I should do. And I'm not disagreeing with on one here. We'll play with a little bit of the slider there, all right? And now I think 
the white balance, maybe I'll go a little bit more warm. Uh, and I like, I like the browns in this photo and, you know, I think that that's pretty cool. And we'll deal with the eggs here in a second because those are a little bit different type of blue. Um, and I think I'll bring the blacks down just a tad to really build in some contrast. And I'll even pull the contrast slider up a little bit. I, I want this to be a little bit of a punchy image. That's just my personal take. Uh, I really like the out of focus framed elements around the outside of the image. So I'm gonna leave that all alone. Uh, and I can't get to my info from here. Uh, so I'm not gonna, what I wanted to do is see what ISO I shot this on to see if I need to do any noise reduction. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some noise reduction in there just to see what happens. Uh, as you can see, it softens up the image just a little bit. And I guess I'm okay with that amount. Uh, hold down on the photo before and then get the after. It, it's coming along, all right? Now, I think it's time for some effects. So let's go into the effects. The very first effect that I wanna throw on here is a curves, all right? So I'm gonna throw a curves adjustment on here and I am going to go to the blue channel and I'm gonna pull back and add in just a little bit more of that yellow overall on the image. I really like the, the warm look to the image. So I'm gonna leave that alone. We'll add another effect here and maybe we'll go with a glow. Let's try a glow. Let's see what happens here. So throw in the amount and that's looking pretty good. I wanna keep it subtle. Um, so I'm okay if it doesn't look like it's doing anything, but it feels like it's doing something, right? Uh, the My approach to photo editing is as, unless I'm going for something bold, I wanna be subtle, all right? Now we'll get into editing these eggs. So I'm gonna zoom in and sometimes on one likes to shut down. I don't know why, whenever I get to painting, on one likes to shut down, but hopefully we don't have any of those issues uh, this time around. So what I'm gonna do, make sure that my brush size is pretty good. That may be a little too big. That's just about right. And then I'll bring the opacity down just a little bit because I don't need a whole lot of opacity, but I do want my feather to be pretty high. The reason for being, I'm about to paint a little bit of saturation into these eggs. And I just wanna make sure that I'm getting, uh, you know, some good saturation in there. I could have very easily done this with the, um, with the color enhancer. And I may turn this off just to see which one looks the best to my eyes. All right. And let's see, desaturated, saturated. And now let's zoom out and let's turn this adjustment off and on. It, it just brings a little bit of pop color to the eggs. So what I'm gonna do is click on this mask once I get my masking options back here. And I'm gonna copy it. All right, I think I got it copied, yeah, I did. All right, now I'm gonna go back to my effects. I'm going to hit the plus icon and I'm gonna to go to color adjustment. And before I start doing anything, I'm gonna go ahead and paste the mask that I got from my local adjustment onto here. Go back to my local adjustment, turn that off because I don't want to see that in the final uh, edit. I just want to see how this is all going to work out. So now I'm going to go ahead and tap on my aquas because I think that's more of an aqua color. We'll find out here in a second. And I'm going to hit the saturation. And I'm going to mess around with the hue. Yeah, I'm really affecting those eggs in this color range. And they're more of a dark blue than anything else. I have no idea what type of bird this is, but they're more of a dark blue. So I think that is getting a little bit better. We'll even bring the brightness down. Let's turn that off and turn it back on. So yeah, that, that's getting it. 
Let's see if I can actually affect something in the blues. We'll saturate it and we'll push it more towards blue and we'll even darken that up just a touch. And I think that looks a little bit better than just the saturation. So already you can see the power that you have in the On One mobile app. Is there things to be desired for? Absolutely, but I'm not gonna go into the negatives. I'm gonna show you what you can do with the app right now because that's what's more beneficial. And as things improve, you know, I'll come back with more updates. So this photo looks pretty good to me. I will show you the before and then the after. Now, the last thing that I wanna do is really work on the position of the, of the eggs so I'm going to go with a crop and I'm going to go with free form here and probably just bring the eggs into the lower third by cropping and then dragging this up. And I think that looks just about the way that I would want it to look. Um, I should probably keep an aspect ratio because that does look a little odd, uh, at least to me. So. I have a three to two, two to three. I don't know why I did that, because I didn't, whatever. Uh, now, let's just go ahead and drag this up, bring it around, maybe pull it that way. Yeah, I, I think with the keeping the aspect ratio, this is as good as it's gonna get, and that's okay. You know. You could center it. This is all personal preference. You could center it, and this looks like a perfectly good crop, uh, you know, composition. But I like my elements personally to be on uh, either the lower or the upper third, mostly in the lower third. Uh, that's just a personal preference. So I'm going to leave it uh, something like this. But now I feel like I'm cutting out. I'm nitpicking this, so. Yeah, there. Final edit on that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit back because when you're done with all your edits, you don't have to hit save or hit done. You just hit the back arrow in the upper left hand corner and it takes you back into your gallery view. So now, you know, I could go through and edit all of these other photos. I don't believe that there's a way of doing mass edits. So let me see if I can hit select on that one and hit here. No, it only looks like I can just move the location of the edit. So I don't have a way of copying the effect onto multiple photos that I'm aware of. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Um, you can copy mask, I think, and that's probably all the copying capability uh, because you come to effects. Doesn't even look like you can save these. I, I've already covered that uh, a little bit in my preview video or uh, review of this particular app. So just take that for what it's worth, all right? Uh, now let's go ahead and work on the exporting option. Now. Unless you are sending these directly to a client, you're probably just going to export it from on one and onto your iPad and then probably uploading to some sort of delivery service like Dropbox or Zenfolio or something of that sort. Now, for me, I do use Zenfolio. I don't have a Zenfolio app on my uh, iPad, but I could put them into Zenfolio, send those to my clients and do all of my work right here on the iPad, all right? Um, I think that it's a little intuitive, and if you have the Apple Pencil uh, or some sort of stylus, if you're not using the iPad, I think you can get away with this. Now, when it comes to exporting, you may want to, uh, it depends on what you're trying to do, right? You can go with the original, which is gonna give you the maximum size, no compression whatsoever or you may want to go with JPEG. Now, if you're using the cloud sync, you can absolutely sync these back to your main computer and then archive them on your main computer and have more computing power and abilities inside of On1 with your main computer if that's what you so choose. 
But if you're only going with a mobile device and you want to, you know, just get stuff done, upload it to Instagram, Facebook, whatever, then there's actually a share to option. All right. And there you go. So the, the app closed on me. This is normal. I don't know. I mean, it's not favored or preferred, I should say, but it is normal. So I'm going to go back to the share to option, hit share to. And hopefully this time it doesn't crash on me. Uh, there are some bugs that are still being worked out, but if it closes on you, as long as you don't lose your edits, you'll be good. All right. Now I can share to any one of these devices here, you know, these areas, options, whatever. Uh, but I can also go more and I can add more sharing services. Now, Again, I don't have Instagram or Facebook on my iPad, but if I did, they would be right there. If you want to share to Twitter, it can go right there. If you have Dropbox, you'll have the ability to do that. Um, you know, I can share it to my Google Drive, which is what I actually pay for. Um, and you can airdrop all that good stuff. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. Based on the device that you are using, you will have options to share and that's where your workflow becomes your workflow. Uh, how do you want to get this work out from your device and into the hands of whomever you're trying to send it to? So hopefully that helped out. So hopefully this workflow helped you get an idea of what you can do with On One Mobile. If you found it helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you are new to the channel and you haven't heard that I have an email list just for signing up, you get free on one photo raw presets and I am working on new presets. On May 22nd, I have a live stream set up to go over blending options inside of on one. That will be a desktop application live stream. I may throw some iPad stuff in there if that's something that you're interested in. Let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any questions about the workflow of using on one mobile with your, you know, mobile setup, then throw it in the comment section below. I do reply to my comments. And until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.